Thank you so much, guys, for coming in. And we are going to get started straight away. Apparently, we have no one uh, maybe asking for anything, so we are happy. On a Friday, I know it's a bit tricky, guys, but uh, here we are. We want to try something, as usual. Let us try learning something. And you never know uh, where this can take us in the next level. So today, basically, we want to look at uh, some of these things that we have been talking about, creating a learner-centered online lesson, because it is not just a matter of creating lesson, but creating a learner-centered online lesson is very, very important. And that's what we are going to look at uh, today. So kindly, uh, thank you for coming on board and we will be we will be definitely uh, enjoying this session together great uh, you can see several of us have managed to come in and uh, probably let us just continue uh, there are those leaving and coming back leaving and coming back yet there are those who are really stuck with us thank you so much the recording will also be available after this so that uh, those who are missing out may not be able to miss out. Today we are so excited to have uh, guys who are going to work with us and I think um, I, I would really be probably honored to add some of you in the team and that is exactly what I'm trying to do uh, right away so that at least we add some of uh, our colleagues in the team. So it will be very easy, uh, for instance, uh, if at all, um, those who are trying to, to, reach, uh, to reach us can be able to also get us through being part of the team. Good. Um, I'd also like to mention that uh, this particular session was basically inspired by uh, some of our colleagues in the team here who have really done so well uh, by supporting and helping us. So probably, I think if you get a chance, we'll be talking to Michael Jogu, who has already done uh, much work and is also going to be one of our presenters today. Thank you guys and I feel welcome to, to, the, to the team today, okay. Right. So let me just go straight ahead and let us start. When we talk about creating an adaptive learner centered online lesson on Moodle, we are talking actually, we are still talking about how a teacher or an educator can be able to create an online lesson. Remember, this is not online teaching the way it has been known. It is not the way people think about online learning and they think it's about just giving content or TV or radio or audio or video or PDFs and that's all. But here we are talking about real teaching and there's nothing a teacher cannot be able, uh, can, can achieve without a lesson. So a lesson is, is, is something that's very key. And that lesson, that's what you're saying, if a lesson is even made more adaptive, more learner-centered, then it is even a better lesson. So let me, let us just take you through what to talk about when I talk about adaptive. Some of the adaptive activities can be when a teacher is creating a lesson, we are hoping that uh, some of that adaptive uh, activities can be, um, probably you are creating activities that will be able to give meaningful recommendation to the student based on their choice or action. So if a student, and remember we talked about artificial intelligence last time, and, and, and it is apparent that artificial intelligence is embedded in our learning management system. An aspect of artificial intelligence comes out very clearly when a teacher can be able to develop a content or rather can be able to create an activity that is capable of giving recommendation to a learner based on their action, based on their choices, based on the way they are answering questions and stuff like that. Then, of course, we're talking about using, you can as well use 
some of the activities which are uh, which are embedding simulation or case studies and you know you keep directing learning activities based on the way the learners are responding to the case studies you are giving them if you are giving presenting them with a problem look at the way they are going to solve the problem if they solve the problem in a certain way or in a certain direction then you presented with we represent them with certain kind of content not necessarily the same kind of content that everybody is doing i think this level of teaching is what we want so that it is learner centered it is about teachers um teachers working together to get to um, probably what we want us to do for instance we want to uh, probably have the learner discuss identify a situation and is able to direct their own learning they they can reroute the course it's not just the same way we go through teaching probably the way we train all, all the time maybe that's not the way uh, in this particular case it will be okay now another thing of course the idea is we are dealing with the learner remember the other time we talk about the generations we are dealing with and one thing which came out very clear was that the generation we are dealing with is specifically very very uh, interactive this is a generation that you have to really really uh, be very careful you may be coming up with something yet you are very very uh, you end up being very annoying to them or you don't do the right thing as as, as probably as is expected so um, i think maybe it is it is it is right as, as we keep saying that uh, we can be able to see uh, as awesome uh, maybe there's no question i was just looking around if there's anybody with a question so we are saying the generation we are dealing with are very very they, are, they get bored very fast and they don't want things which are just sticking there they want very engaging activities and how do we engage them online this is very important because now we are talking about online we're not talking about offline engaging them offline is very easy you give them something to do give them a book to read and if they are doing the book they are doing something else but when it comes to online it the situation changes completely and here it's about what activity so that's what we want to know today is there a way we can set up our lesson in such a way that uh, the lesson is very engaging so uh, and remember what could be a lesson in lms here we are talking about a lesson being a set of content our pages i mean content pages and question pages and based on the responses of the questions students are directed specific content you can decide to take that approach or maybe the traditional approach what were you doing with the with the training or uh, with the, the lessons in your lesson plan there was text so how do we bring that same scenario of a classroom to online. This is what we are going to do today. And thank you, Michael, I'm seeing you on. Uh, can you greet your people, if at all you're in? I know the internet. Yes, I am. Hello. Yes, yes, Hello. Can can you. You, you can You can hear me, eh? Oh, okay. Uh, I, yes, I'm following you. And uh, what you are saying is actually making a lot of sense. Although I was uh, of the view that um, although we are talking about um, uh, finding new ways of uh, delivering content we don't take out the classroom as the way we have it so uh, i was thinking uh, that uh, the way we structure our lesson is uh, is what is most important but as you have said a lesson gives us a lot of flexibility and especially for a uh, different kind of learners because uh, you'll find some uh, will understand something very quickly, others might uh, take some time. Uh, with the uh, online, it's actually possible to take care of the two learners at the same time, whereby depending on uh, how did you get it, uh, uh, like uh, are you able to do a certain activity? Uh, you can be able to be directed to uh, a different uh, slide that maybe somebody who might require a little bit of time. So uh, that flexibility is actually there when you talk about an online lesson, which it might not be in a, in a normal classroom. But uh, for me, 
uh, as a teacher, notes, giving notes is there. Uh, a lesson should have notes. A lesson should have uh, that interactivity. Uh, and all this, it's possible to do them online. But otherwise, I'm very happy that uh, uh, you have introduced us to this kind of an LMS. Uh, that is very promising, actually. I can see my students uh, being able to follow it up as long as I can be able to engage them, uh, to make them stick. Uh, you know, the internet again has its challenges. They might be tempted to click here and there and get out of the lesson if uh, it's not really, really engaging. Thank you. Uh, Michael? Uh, probably because so that not to allow you to get echo, I'm going to mute you, but you can always unmute yourself whenever you want to to work. Um, great. So I think maybe as 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 uh, Michael has just given us uh, a part of it is that um, it is very important that we know that we are not going to run away from the classroom scenario. The same same classroom situation we have had all the all the time is what we want to try and bring. And let me tell you, teachers, I'm really, really pushing this because I'm so worried when I see other people who are not teachers doing things which are sincerely not really, as much as we may think they're really building, they're not building because a teacher knows what to press, which button to press. I want to take an example. You have a child at home. You may know a lot. You may be a graduate. You may be a PhD holder. You may be so famous, but that child, you may not even be able to teach them just simple mathematics of one plus one. I mean, look at that kind of thing. So this is what we're talking about. What is the role of a teacher? A teacher can do it all because the children only believe on the teacher. The learner, the student only sees the professor, the instructor as the only source of uh, probably help. The facilitator who can facilitate their learning is the teacher. So let us take, let us stand up teachers. This is what I'm encouraging you guys. Let us just rise up. Let us not allow people who are not teachers to come in the scene. That's because we are leaving it out for them. Let us come out. And you remember the, the, the minister uh, really is complaining of these people who are not teachers and they're the ones now grabbing all the opportunities of rising and trying to teach even online and they're wondering. And you know, it is something that is really a concern. Maybe it is not bad, but we, 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 we as teachers probably are missing out because we have the skill. Remember, as Michael has just said, there is a very big possibility that as a teacher, you know the way you teach, you bring now the lesson, the whole lesson online. Let us see what else. Um, and then, of course, we've talked about the AI element. This AI element is very important in an online situation because it's going to take at least 80% of the teacher's uh, idea. For example, you know, a teacher, when you're in class, there are questions. They are the way you interrogate your students as you are talking to them in the classroom. And this gives you a direction on how, to, what to take so that you don't waste time on what the learners already know. But you look for a way of how you plug in into what they already know. Remember, learning is not about uh, pouring on, or replacing an empty mind with some content. No. Learning is building on, an, on, on, on a previous experience of the learner. And in most cases, you find a way. How do you la uh, plug in? Otherwise, it becomes very hard. And that's why now. So if we get some platform where we can be able to ask the learners, if they get an answer correctly, then they go to the next page. If they get the wrong answer, then they, they go to a page that explains the concept in more detail. They do some remedial. Remember, we're talking about student learner-centeredness. So how do we get those remedial uh, issues for the learners? And then we don't also present everything to all the learners at the same time. That is very important when we talk about the artificial element of a learning management system. So let us look at the structure of a lesson on Moodle. What really makes a lesson a lesson on Moodle? How does it look like? And therefore, because it's a very important art, that's why we say it, in, 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 instead of just going to Moodle and talking about Moodle all through, we, we are going to pick some of the elements that are really relevant to the teaching and then we bring. So we are looking at the scenario of a classroom. What do we need? We need a lesson then. How can we also bring the lesson online? And when people talk about 
online lessons, they only think about face-to-face -face or, I mean, in terms of live event, the way we say it, uh, maybe having a Zoom session, having probably a Skype session with your student. That may be, it's now what we're calling synchronous. But what about asynchronous? You can also still have a lesson. And I think that one is good, but you can imagine there are so many things which are being left out. For example, note taking, uh, probably questioning, and maybe having student centeredness. You know, when all of them are in your screen, and all of them you can see uh, Joma there, maybe John is the other side, they appear on your screen. You are busy teaching, you are busy demonstrating, asking a bit of question. Maybe it's not enough. Because again, probably the problem with the internet and all that, students may not be able to get ample time of learning. And maybe that particular student with a very specific need, learning need, may miss out. And that's why we need to have a better way of doing it. So a lesson all begins with first, you have to modify the settings for the lesson. And let me demonstrate that. Uh, this is a demonstration. We'll get back to Michael. We also have Edward online. We also have other team members also working online. But uh, all in all, let me just again pick you. Um, I'm taking you back to the probably the the lessons. Okay. Uh, let me just share my screen a bit here. Uh, right. Correct. I think there we can have. So let's say I want to go to form one, and I want to create a lesson in form one. And then probably it is, let me pick probably computer studies lesson in form one. Uh, I think there was a sample here, but I can always delete this. Let me delete this so that we don't have anything. Remember, we, when we are looking at the, the, the structure of, of module, you can change all this the way you want. You can change the name of the topic. You can even change it to maybe uh, there are people using strand or substrand, you can say this is a strand. Of course, remember how to change, we are talking about, we have to try as much as possible to do what? Um, to customize, and the Moodle is very customizable. Don't be, be don't, don't probably get stuck. When you're stuck, we're here to support. Uh, maybe we are talking about the topic here in computer uh, science, uh, computer studies, and the topic is probably introduction, computer studies. I, I want to just customize that section. That is it. So what, what kind of activity do we need to add in this particular section or for this? So we say among all the activities we were talking about, I want you to look at this very keenly because it's very important. There are many activities we can put here. We can add an assignment. It's, it's very clear we can add an assignment. Uh, of Valentine, welcome from Nairobi. We have so many guys online. I'll be I'll be talking, and it's awesome. This, you people, you are so many today. Uh, I thought it was a Friday. You may not turn in, but I'm so I'm just loving it because you are here. Thank you so much. So look at the activities we can add in our classroom. When you add something like probably just a label, uh, maybe a big pin. Remember, big pin is for face-to-face -face meeting. If I click on this, they will be able. You will be, you'll get all this small information. Big pin, big blue pin is like a Zoom. Lets you create within Moodle links to real time online classroom. It can be chatting. Remember, we talked about chat session. It's also synchronous and also maybe face to face session online. And there are also online recording uh, live session. I think that one we we've talked about. And we have chat. We can create a chat. We can have be talking about a choice. Maybe it's a database. With a database is here, you are telling students to add in what they want. Probably you are giving them, uh, you are talking about recipe. And tell them, can you cook your food? And take a photo and add it here. So you see, you have already created a database for them. Maybe they are in EGS app for JavaScript simulation. Remember the simulations we were talking about the other day when we were going to FET. Remember the, the website for FET? Uh, FET is a P H E T, and and remember the simulation of balancing. Students were able to simulate all their in virtual laboratory where they're mixing chemicals. You know, you can always bring all those activities and add them there. 
and they add to the students. And all these are all integrated. Maybe it's a feedback or a forum or a glossary or hot potato. Remember, there are those people who have done hot potato in others' forums. And you can see, you can create quizzes in hot potato and anything else. Uh, maybe crossword, games. It's that what you want to do. Maybe it's interactive content, a presentation that is able to give them uh, that I'll be showing you later, that probably they are not supposed just to watch a video all through. If they're watching a video of the way the heart is pumping, stop the video at a particular time, post the video, ask them a question. Based on that question, they can continue to watch that video. Without working on that question, they will not continue to watch that video. You see that now the idea is the same way so that they don't just sit down and watch a video until the video is ended. Then you expect learning has taken place. With the interactive content, we can make every other aspect. And here we have a lot. If I even put add now, you can see so many other things you can be able to add, which are also interactive. Even PowerPoint, even if you are supposed to use the PowerPoint, uh, for example, uh, let me just, it's just a brief overview, but I'm, I'll be going back to what we're talking about. So here, is it interactive video? Is it a course presentation? Maybe it's just, you want to give them a PowerPoint, but you don't want a situation where they're just busy, just scrolling over the PowerPoint presentation and like that. You want them as they go through, they are learning and you can stop the PowerPoint at a particular level, ask them questions, they answer, and when they answer the questions correctly, they can move or else there is touch watching the video. You know, such a thing. These are some of the artificial intelligence uh, things that are now incorporated. Is it about dragging the words or is it about quiz, uh, maybe um, a choice uh, and, and all that. Thank you for coming in, but uh, keep trying. I think it's only one time. Once you have learned how to come in uh, the first time, the second and the third time, it will be very easy for you. Uh, finding the, the, all this, it's, it can be hard, but it's really, it's good, it's good you are in. Now, let me again take you back. That one was just uh, a by the way. So again, we are saying you come here, you want to add an activity. So you click on add activity. And I've just been given you several of them. But under interactive content, you will see lesson. There are also quizzes. There are SCOM packages. SCOM is just, uh, we call them, there are those uh, probably, uh, you can use a different, a third party uh, program, like a third party tool, like Lectora, like uh, probably Adobe, Adobe uh, Captivate, to create a whole lesson or a whole learning content. Then you just bring here as a package. You package it and you just uh, bring it so that it will be integrated. So Moodle opens up for anything. We talked about a survey. You want maybe giving students a survey, just survey their way. Maybe the way you survey using uh, uh, maybe a key inquiry question is very important. A wiki, remember a wiki we say they can all be able to build content. They are, they are, all, they are all creating content. You want to create a, work, a, a workshop probably add a book, a file, a folder with all these things. And all these things cannot, we are saying you can use all of them interchangeably. You can combine everything together. You can put this tool and again you put, you know, as the teacher, it all depends on whatever thing. But today our main focus is on lesson. So kindly let us look at how do we use a lesson? You want to teach a lesson, what do you do? Uh, so we'll click on lesson and add. And remember we say the first thing that really happens is it all begins here, modifying the setting for the lesson. We want to modify the setting for, the, for this particular upcoming lesson. So what is the lesson uh, that we are talking about? Now let us, let us look at the lesson here. So before the lesson, so first of all, you can give it the lesson. Maybe for example, our lesson is what? is a computer. Remember the lesson, introduction to computer. So maybe the lesson title may be, uh, or maybe we let us begin, yes, or yes, what is a, maybe it's introduction to computer, yes. That is based on your substrand or based on your subtopic. You can even still go on and say definition of a computer. 
That is your first uh, all right. Let me hope so. Christine, I know you're in the house. Now look at other things. You want to put a description? If you put a description, yes, here is where you can put uh, your expectation. The lesson will take probably 20 marks. You must finish the lesson. You can put all that and then they will be displayed in the course page. But I want to leave that one blank for now. But you are free. Appearance. What do you want to appear? You may want there's this tool here. I want you to look at this. This is a progress bar, if you can see the progress bar. The progress bar will always be able to make the students uh, able to see <clears throat> how far they have come, maybe the percentages they have taken, so that they know they have to complete the activity or not, or they have to complete the lesson. So they'll have to see at themselves. The same way whenever we do our lesson plan, the step one, introduction. Step two, you're now bringing in the content. Step three, probably you're bringing in another content. Step four, you're asking for questions. And then finally, you're doing maybe an evaluation or conclusion of your lesson and you're, and you're ending the class. The same way you want the learners to control their own lesson and probably give them the progress bar. Display menu, it's, it's, if you want to display menu, the only challenge with this is learners may be able to jump, jump without focusing on what you want. So I don't want to turn it on. Uh, there are more, there are more things, there are more uh, ideas here, but I, I, I want to leave them just untouched for now. You don't need even availability. When should this lesson be available? Again, you have to say probably it is on eighth. Uh, or you can, by default, if you just put that, then it's already now available for learners. You can even set the date when it should be available. Then there are even things to do with, even you can put a password to the lesson so that nobody accesses, because probably you have created a lesson for just a few, num for, a, for, for some, for just, just this group of kids whom you think they deserve to be given more attention. You want to add more learning to them then you can now put a password and only give to those who are supposed to access it but we don't need that then in terms of flow allow student review yes we want the student to be able to look at the lesson because it should be as as uh, but again based on the teacher what do you want the lesson to look like remember we are just setting up the lesson if there are questions how many times do you want the students to do um, provide option to try the question again yes we can but if we don't want so that if they fail we take them straight but if we give them a question if the question has true and false and you tell them try the question you know you are encouraging guessing so that they just guess one if they don't get it then okay maybe the other one now you see i get the point so that you don't allow that kind of providing option to try the question again they only answer the question once and then they go to the next level or go back to review or get a remedial content that is one thing i want you to be looking at so in terms of grading you can grade the lesson point yes 100 and grade to pass you can say 50 percent uh, uh, for them maybe after finishing your lesson with some of the questions remember we are talking about formative assessment here there's no summative assessment it's about Formative assessment, but again, you can introduce and some element of uh, summative maybe at the end of the lesson. But the formative, as they are continuing, there are those questions you can be giving them. But you can decide to grade them so that they, they form part of the bigger, uh, the bigger uh, maybe marks at the end of the term. So, uh, is this a practice lesson? If you put it as a practice lesson, then the marks will not appear in your grade book. Remember, you are. Your, your mark 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 list will appear because this one will make for you automatic mark list and show you how the students have done what they have been able to take and what they have been able to do so probably we don't say this is a practice lesson. it's a real lesson for them to do there are many things we can even add some restrictive access do you want some restrictive access they have to finish this lesson before getting the other activity in terms of activity completion how when do you want the student to to, do you want the student to manually or maybe some conditions should be met maybe for them and uh, this uh, student must view the activity to complete it yes student must reach the end of the lesson page to complete this activity yes you want the student to learn all through 
those are the, 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 the thing you can be putting down, right? But don't put timing because of the internet, we may not be able to say they have to do it within 30 minutes. Because if you put, but again, it's your own, you know your student. Remember, in our introduction lesson, we say ensure you know your learners very well. I think the last one would be competency. For those doing competency-based learning, here is your opportunity to put now the competency that you're going to look at. At the end of this lesson, what are some of the competencies that we'll be looking at and how do we go around doing that? Once you're done with the setting, you save. And it's, remember, we have not even done the lesson yet. We were working on the setting. It is important you set up your lesson. And once I save and display, I will be taken here <coughs> straight away as a teacher. And the question will be, what do you want to do first? Of course, as we are now working, uh, I think there's a problem with that, um, with that, with that, with, with the spelling, and we will work on that. We'll change that later. Uh, but it, all in all, let me let me imagine that. Okay. Then you're also encouraged to have a lesson template. If possible, if you don't have one, we can always, when we come maybe to your schools and all that, because it's, it's important you have some template. And this is some uh, kind of a template that we have created. Uh, you can see the, the template. Uh, let me just put it a bit bigger so that you're able to see it. This is our template because it is from here that I will be. Now I see, I'm uh, saying the model, uh, the introduction to computers. So the lesson probably is definition of computers. Content page one, because we'll be having several pages. Uh, I, I mean, this page is, is like, say, the step, the step you want to move. And this one depends entirely on what you want to do here. Because you, you may have this kind of model. Maybe your model is about you want to give a content, then another content, up to the end, then you do evaluation at the end of the lesson. It all depends on what you want to do. Or you want to have a different approach. The idea is either you do a content, do a knowledge check, and let me just have this, uh, the writing on. So we are saying, content first, let them see some bit of content. And the content here can be anything, can be a video, multimedia, even a video of yourself explaining the concept. Or some notes will be there for them also to read. Some interactive, probably PowerPoint, uh, or even probably you have given them all those PDFs to read, or even a website. So this can be anything. Then once you have given them the way you want them to teach. Then, of course, you now come to test. Try evaluating it. If they don't get it, give them remedial. Or you can take them even back to the same content so that they watch it again. But if you have some remedial, as usual, remember the way the teachers teach. Get a student who is weak, give them remedial. The student who is good, let them go to the next. Don't waste their time. Let them jump to the next content. And then now learner-centered. That's what we're talking about. Then once they reach the, the second part, look, check again. You can evaluate again. And the process, the circle continues. If not good, let them be given another remedial here. Okay? And if you like it, try cost grading. Grade. Maybe give them 10 marks for passing this particular level. Then here again, give them another 10 for passing that level. By the end, of course, remember you are 50. Uh, 50 points will be gotten. And all this can be put on their grade. Remember, it's about formative assessment. And it's, it is good. That last time we were talking about assessment. In fact, what we'll be doing in our next session will be now assessing learning. And we'll be talking more keenly on how to use rubric. Because remember, when you use a rubric, I don't know who asked about a rubric. When you use a rubric, remember, you are not, <laughs> you're not comparing the student versus the other student. No, you're comparing the student versus a, a set down criteria, a very transparent system. But you see, as teachers, we are human beings. 
the moment I have a paper of Jane, and I know Jane is usually a very good student, has or entered in this college with very high marks, is a very disciplined student. I am again bent to judge Jane based on the physical appearance or the those particular personal behavioral work. So I'm not going to judge them transparently. So in order to avoid those personal issues that comes with us teachers, the best you need to do is have a criteria. And that set criteria rule is what we are calling a rubric. Because you will be assessing the learner, not against other learners, but against a particular set criteria, against a rubric. And that's what we're talking about. So it makes you even, uh, if it's about drawing, what are some of the criteria you're putting? How do you judge a good drawing? We judge a good drawing by the following. One, you should have a clear typo. Two, no rubbing, more than five rubbing. Five, you know, like that. So if you have something like that, the assessment becomes very cool. I think we'll be talking about assessment in our next uh, lesson. But now at least you have seen, when you're creating a lesson, think of which model you want to do. Model number two is also very good. So those who are creating lessons, see if at all your model uh, features here, but we'll be seeing samples very, very shortly. Okay, and I think that's what we need in terms of model. And look at our sample here. So let us go to our lesson and try creating it. Um, I'm sorry, we are trying to do so many things at a go. So in terms of what you want to do first, I think this one is already here. So we can go to click, edit, so that we start. So do you want to import questions? or you want to add, add content page. Maybe you want to add cluster. With the cluster, is like so many questions before a student goes to the next one. So what do you want to do? So in our model here, uh, if I can take you back to the model, the one we want is first, uh, we want to add um, probably, where is that model? I think it's here. Yes, so we say, for us, we want to do the first one, which is we want to have a content and probably another content. Then we do knowledge check, something like that. Then you can evaluate after giving two steps, moving to step one and two. Maybe step one, we want to talk about the objective of the lesson. We want to set the expectation and get the expectation of the student. So what is the objective? And then now here we get into maybe uh, probably definition or something like that or explanation or notes for them or a video or a photo that's what and then we want to get the knowledge check from here now look at looking at that let us go back to where we were which is uh, here so what do we need we said we need a content we will add a content page now we are starting to create a lesson guys the first instant was just to set set make modify the settings of the lesson how you want the lesson to be now the content of the lesson now comes here you can add a question to that particular lesson it all depends if you want to start with a key inquiry question the way it's required then you can start with a question so you just start a, add a question page and probably start with a key inquiry question what are some of the gadgets you people are having having there blah blah blah, blah, blah. you can add that but if it's a content you are starting the way <laughs> Most of us we start with introduction. Okay, fine. Let us go with content page. I've chosen content page. So once I get content page, first I give the title of the page, and this is where. And remember, let me go back to my. Uh, I can now say uh, the title of this section B. What is computer? Huh, is it? Oh, let us put learning objective as our title of this first page. So I'll go back here. Uh, Michael, you are in. Edward, you are also in. Uh, you can see me going through if you want to support. I mean, everybody has got a design, uh, how you can try and do that. So here, the, what you put here, remember, is what will, will be able to appear. So let me go. And I want you to see very keenly because I want from here, we'll be able to, I'm just copying this. I'm copying this kindly, remember, to, to do it like this so that 
you have everything planned. Uh, so by the end of this lesson, you remember, somebody was saying the learners will be that, that kind of a lesson plan you are preparing for the head teacher or for the supervisors or for the education officers. But here we are preparing, we are talking with the learner. It is learner centered. So you're talking to this learner. You, by the end of the lesson, you'll be able, this lesson, you'll be able to learn to define a computer, distinguish between data and information. This lesson, therefore, will introduce you what a computer is. You know, you can give them some. If you have a question, kindly do not hesitate to send it to the chat section or post it in the forum for everyone to support you. You see that? Now, you can say, you can also add many things, display in menu, uh, stuff like that. Maybe you can enable and leave things the way they are. Then the question is, after here, where do you want them to go to? Probably now that's another page, but that page we have not yet created it. First of all, let us just create a, this content page. Then we'll create another one here. When they talk about description, they are not talking about really something uh, like a lot of that. It's where you're going to jump. So it's like a link to where you need to go after this. Where do you go to? We'll, let me save this and you'll see how it looks like. So once I'm done, uh, or oh, they want us to move, let's first of all just put next. Maybe where, where will we go to from here? Maybe we'll go to a page go called Let's Get started after probably uh it will be let us say let's get started i don't know we have not created that page but we say next page for now but if we have created the page then it will appear here okay the page will appear here all right right so let's get started. if it's an, a question page will it also appear here so next uh next we jump to the next page so that's the link so we save this page uh, we can still come back and change all this. Don't be worried about it. So that's how a lesson has just started. So you can see what we have here. Uh, already a lesson objective is the first content page. Then the next one, we can now say we add another page. We can add a new page, or we can add a question page. We can add another branch, or we can add another cluster. We can add another whatever. But we want to add another content page now again it will take you back to this session and now the content page remember it was called uh, it's now called let's let us um started that is the page because now we want them to to start working then now i can go back to my template again here in my template uh okay uh, it is maybe I'll start with this question. So let me just write all this here. Uh, maybe that, that you can also you can change the way you want, guys. I'm just putting. Can we put all this here? Uh, oh, there is there is even an element here. Uh, where is the content? So we will do. We will need an an image of a laptop or uh, maybe a desktop or something like that to put in this page and therefore where do we go get that the notes definition of a computer we need to put that the, the notes which we need there uh okay let me just copy this go back to the lesson uh here and we are going to paste them there but we said up here we need to put some uh, illustration or an image of computer we don't have the image yet we can go go to google um let me go to probably google or bing remember we have two bing or google so let me just google and say an image an image of desktop or a laptop it all depends uh, with what you want maybe that's what i want so you'll find all these then is it good to use this? The answer is yes and no. Yes and no, because look, if I want to get an image from the internet, it is important to look at the image so that you don't get into trouble with people with copyright issues. So there is these tools. You see here, tools. Uh, there are so many images. So because I only need images, I can put all these. And you can see everything here is images. But I want an image that does not have a problem with 
with with uh, with copyright issues, and then I click on tools. When I click on tools, you can see another th another another level here coming in. There's size, there's color, then user rights. So it's what I can drop down and look for those which I want it to filter. I want to filter these images so that I get one with which can allow me to reuse with modification if I want to modify the image or even reuse, labeled for reuse. Let me get those ones which are allow me. So all these images that we have, we have here are allowed, I can reuse them the way I want because the owners have allowed us to reuse them. So which one do I want? Probably I can pick an, an image that I think may they, they may know immediately, like probably, uh, let's get this of uh, somebody. Yeah, and I can see it's a very large, image so it's definitely a very quality image so when i have this image selected i just right click or you control click or alt click if i mean uh or no alt control click or command click if you're using a mac or s or just right click if you are using a mouse so and then you save image you'll see uh, a menu for saving image so you save image as and then you look for a place where you're going to save image and call it laptop. Remember, remember always love to use a free copyrighted because if you use copyrighted issues, <coughs> you may end up getting your school into problem because there are people outside there who are just waiting, uh, who, are, who are just waiting, waiting to, 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 to take an, uh, let's say, <laughs> Uh, court issues. So if they see the school is very rich and they really want to make issues about it, they just say, this is my image, they're using it without my permission. So it's always good uh, to be safe and you're protecting the school. Maybe yourself, nobody can take you to court anyway. If you use this one for personal issues, definitely nobody, you have no money and people are not going to struggle with you. But a school or an organization which has money, uh, these people are very, very keen on dealing with you. So it's good you come to tools and always look for which kind of uh, license you'd want to go for. Uh, Non-commercial use, reuse, or reuse with even modification is even better because you can want even to pick it and even label it and change some things and use it. And this is a tool you need. You need to look at all these kind of things we are talking about when you're looking for a uh, staff online. I think we are going to have uh, another lesson called digital media literacy and this is what we are going to talk about how do you determine which website is authentic which one is good or which one is safe for for you to use for learners which one is not good which one has got the correct information and which one has got the uh, wrong info because we are having an issue at the moment learners are going online and they are not even able to evaluate which website is good enough and which one is not good enough and you see we we are all thinking only about probably pornographic material or things like, you know, the learners need to be safe online. They're getting to wrong sites. No, but have we ever thought about these learners who are, yes, they're safe online, but they're not getting the right information. They don't have the skill on how to maneuver and get the right information to be able to use. A definition of a computer may be in different places, but you as a teacher, what do you recommend which definition do you think will work with your learner? So that at the end of the day, they don't bring all kinds of definitions to the classroom, which even complicates the learning and interferes with them. So all these things, I think we are bringing them very soon in our next uh, agenda on how do we go online? How do we get the right material? And I've just showed you a bit of it. Just getting, uh, to getting images that you reuse, well, will put everybody safe. Or else, if it's a public school, the government will be in trouble because these people will sue the government. There are people who are outside there. They don't bother. When they look at the image, you have used it for personal use. They don't bother with you. They say you are one person. You can't give them money. But when they see the government is involved or a big school is involved, for those dealing with private or universities involved, you are in trouble because they know the university will give them quite a lot of money. And that is something that we need to avoid. So good. So I've taken my image, guys. So I'll go back to the lesson. Uh, here it's back to the lesson. And we want to put uh, this image just 
before this. And remember, we can always remember you can the way you want it to appear, you can come up here and make it media. Remember, this is just a normal editor. It's a text editor, which is very good. It's just word like you can pick, make them bold. You can italicize the way you want. This one, maybe let me put it bold and italic. Yeah, it will come out so well. Then I need an image here. So here is where I can insert an image. Or maybe it's a video you want to insert. And again, when it comes to video, uh, somebody was asking me last in that last lesson, do we have to create videos and upload here? The best is because such a platform you'll find it's about we are very conscious about space. So the best is I uh, remember that we had a lesson on blending learning with the video where I taught you how to create uh, where we, we learned how to create a YouTube channel, how to make the YouTube channel uh, private. You upload videos there. Then you, that link is what you pick and use here and then it'll be OK. So the storing, the issue of storage spaces is not your headache. Give that to YouTube. Yours is just to work on the thing here. So <clears throat> for the image, let me go for the image. I've just clicked an image here and then browse the uh, uh, and you can get the image. Let me browse it on my desktop and the image is somewhere here. It's a laptop. Where is the image? Yes, it is here, a laptop. So I pick that, open the image, and it is there and I can go down. Remember this because I've, I've really uh, zoomed out. So some of the keys are disappearing. You can leave this thing as it is or you can change them or you can even put percentage like 50% or 80% of the, of the original. That is how it looks like and then save. So you see when I save, oh, it requires for you to put a description. For now, I say description is not necessary because I don't want it. I'll be giving description in line. So this is now my, 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 my image. And then I can click on it and go <coughs> enlarge more so that I get center. Because I want this image at the center. So I put it at the center. Now this is the content page, okay? And then once the student finished to learn this, where should they go to? I think they should now get to, let me go back to my template again. Remember, this template is just like a lesson plan, the way you usually do the lesson plan, the definition of data, information, yes, data and information, yes. So let us get this, uh, all right. I think, do we have to up and program? Yes, I think up to here, yes. Let me just get this ready, guys. Uh, I'll be opening, so keep asking, asking questions. Because we want to see how the lesson looks like in a moment. Uh, so we want to come here. Oh, that will be the next, not here. So we just say uh, uh, data, because we want to learn about data uh, information program. OK, that will be our next page. And uh, we say next page. If we will we'll work on this together, we say, skip uh, um, and save the page. So when we go back to the lesson, we see we have already created two pages, but the jump is called next page. We can change all this jump so that it not appear like jump, uh, uh, but in the next let's get started page. Now we are going to add an, that other page. I'll do it very fast guys so that we don't again delay. Don't worry, I may not add so many media. I'll just put, uh, and you can even put, uh, let me just insert here. Uh, that data, <coughs> and then probably here we call it uh, data, okay, uh, information program. So this is another, just another section or another sub, do we call it subtopic? No, you are still teaching, and you know as a teacher you know how you're going to put all these things, and you can even add Remember here you can add your audio, record an audio of yourself. Let, let students listen to your voice. They know Mr. So-and-so, they know Madam So-and-so, they know Sir So-and-so. Let them hear your voice. Let them probably have a small recording about the video. You will have all this at your disposal. You even want to have probably a, a PowerPoint presentation where you do H5P, uh, an interactive something. Okay, let us go straight. Now this one will take us to maybe knowledge check. 
let us see whether the learners are really with us. Okay. Great. So next page, definitely we will see it will be a question page. So probably let's just say next we'll develop all this. We'll come back to clear everything. Now in the knowledge, so we see in our lesson, the students will come here, then go here, then go here. Then now I want to add a question page. And now the question page will be what kind of questions we want. We have multi-point, uh, multi-choice, I mean, sorry, multi-point. Multi-choice, uh, matching, numerical, short answers, true and false. Let me pick multi-choice multi question and add a question page. And now uh, the question, we just give it again, the title of knowledge, knowledge check. And you'll see how this one works, guys, very shortly. So the question, uh, the content of the question, I go back to my, my template here. There's a question I already put here, a multiple, multiple question, uh, then, I just get it ready. And then that is the question. These are the choices. So that is the choice. So I put here the question, uh, which of the following terms uh, is not associated with defining computers? Okay, maybe I'll put a question mark if, if possible. Then answer choice number one uh, would be, uh, I've said data, I think if you can see, in, in our whatever here, data information charts program. Okay, so data, data here, uh, rather, we, we don't know how it will be, uh, probably that's answer one, answer two, and the score. If that's the correct, you give it a score. If it's not the correct answer, you just give a zero. Okay, all right, so, then, or rather, you, if you need all of them to have different whatever, you can have the answer to will be program. Don't worry about the order because the, the computer will reshuffle everything so that learners don't, every other time <clears throat> they come back to attempt the question, they don't guess. Uh, Maureen says, can we be able to do this practically? If you can log in, I'm just worried that if you are not in, I'll just give you maybe a session because we have some minutes. We are ending on this and then we, we give you a time to do it. Sorry. Thank you so much. We will be giving you a session to do it <laughs> practically. I can imagine. Uh, so, yes. But if they get it wrong, if they get it because this is a zero, you take them back to let's get started. Oh, to data or information. Yeah, to let's get started page. If they get it wrong, because this is also another wrong, uh, another wrong one. So where do we want them to jump? We take them back again. This way now we are now taking them back or we don't want, want to allow them until they understand this question. They are not allowed to go anywhere. They have to go back to let's get started page. Now answer number three, which again, we say is now maybe the correct one is chat. And now this is correct because we give it a one, a point. And then now this one will go to the next page because now if they get it correct, now you allow them to go to the next page. Maybe for, for the sake of making this even more complicated, remember we have information, so which is not the correct answer. So you give it a zero, it's not correct answer. But because it's not correct, you want them to go back to learn more about that. So once you're done, you save the page. Now, guys, we have in our section all this. Now, let me let me try and see it the way a student who logs in will be able to see this lesson of ours. I think it is it's almost done. Even if we leave it at this point, then we can now probably get later after that, we can get another page then the end of, and then insert the end of the lesson. Great. Now, as a student, uh, let me just bring in what a student will be able to do. I don't know whether I can get it here. Yes. <clears throat> in this, this space, we have a student called Joy Candy. 
And Joy Candy uh, is a Form 1 student. And because of being in Form 1, the only, the only courses or the only classes which are available for her, she, has, she doesn't have to register to each and every classes, but the classes are here. We see computer form one. Uh, let me bring it a bit big. So let us see what the student will be able to see. So here at the left part of the corner, you see all these are the subjects that this student will be able to do. There is computer, which we have just been doing. So when they when they click computer, we're able to see the lessons. And then there's a lesson here, definition of a computer that the learner need to, to click and go through. So when they click on this, the lesson opens, the definition of a computer, learning objectives, so they see. And then this button is created automatically. Then you can see the progress bar. You have completed 0% of the lesson. You have not gone far. So when they click, now let's get started to start learning. Now the lesson continues. As the lesson continues, step two, let's get started. Definition of a computer. A computer definition, blah, blah, blah. And you see the image is here. And the teacher, you can add anything. You can even show you are doing, for math, you can even demonstrate how the, the, the addition is being done. And that then the next one is about data information and program. And you can see the progress of the lesson as it progresses. The lesson now reaches knowledge check. And the lesson wants the learners to answer this question. Which of the following terms is not associated with defining computers? Let me choose a wrong one. If I submit that, what will happen is... Uh, I will be taken back because it means I didn't read this part very well. But it's as, as, as trouble as trouble here, which we are going to work on shortly. It means we are not supposed to send the progress bar early enough. We need <clears throat> we need to have finished uh, for for us to let the the AI calculate the, the the level of this because apparently there there was there was a small error somewhere. But all in all, you can see there's a progress. There are questions. If the student has gotten a wrong answer, they are taken back. Edward, what do you have to say so far uh, before I leave it open for every teacher to try something and get stuck and we want to see? And I'll also be following up and looking at all the, the program, the, the, the ideas which are there. Michael, <coughs> any input so far? <coughs> because we'll be looking at, yes. Oh, uh, uh, actually, uh, there is a lot of echo. Um, yes, uh, it is. It is because my, yes. my my phone is not muted. Let me mute it for oh, you. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, the structure of the lesson is uh, what is most important. Uh, you have actually done it the way I I usually do it, although with uh, some modifications that I have seen, that are actually even better. Uh, but uh, personally, I've been going for a whole lesson. I normally structure my lesson per topic. The reason being, uh, although I would do it by, by week, reason being per topic, most of the students that are online, that's how we revise. We want to see a particular topic, then uh, we go through that topic, uh, but uh, so uh, I prefer it that way, and then uh, the lessons, uh, I structure them the same way I have structured. Uh, the knowledge check is what is, uh, I normally just give one summative. I want to see, has the student been able to understand that particular content? And that's where I normally put a stop. You can't now go to the next topic until you successfully complete that uh activity uh, with uh, maybe something like a pass mark of about 80 percent but to make it more interactive as you have said you can structure it in such a way that uh, each and every sub topic the one that you have in there according to your lesson then uh, the student is able to navigate by answering the right question uh giving the right response thank you Thank you so much. Uh, I'll mute you again so that you don't get echo. Great. I think maybe you have seen. Uh, <laughs> it is so awesome. These beacon teachers are doing amazing from everywhere in the country. 
and welcome on board. Uh, I think maybe you can be able to see. Now, let us see some of the uh, lessons. For example, uh, I think we have David, a I just here. add on to uh, what uh, Michael said. Hello? I've muted myself so that you, walk, you talk. Thank you. OK, so I just wanted to add to what Michael has said in terms of uh, structuring the, the sections depending on whichever level of the learners that you are dealing with that should be able to dictate the way in which your plan will be able to move and that will really inform in terms of the structure that you are having on your lesson uh, the most important thing we are doing here is that not we are not dumping content to the learners but we want them to navigate through the content we even want them to bring more content on board uh, so that we are able to tap into their experiences. Uh, so the more the tasks in, in your plan, the better, but the tasks must be very, very well balanced in your lesson. So that is what I could be able to say, so that you are helping the learners to develop certain skills, certain competences, and even attitudes as they navigate through the, the, the tasks. So thank you, David, for bringing that uh, out in this lesson today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, today we were really focusing on a lesson. How do we create a lesson? Because teachers are like, how do I teach online? Because the teaching online has been misconceived just to mean throwing content to the learner and expecting the learners are really learning. No, how do we make sure the learners are learning? How do we make it learner-centered? How do we engage the learner? Because engaging the learner is a key thing in, in teaching. If a teacher does not engage the learner, then the teacher is missing out completely. And how do you engage the learner? You don't engage the learner by punishing the learner with a lot of content. No, you are engaging the learner by ensuring you are facilitating the learning. And all these tasks we've said, you can see this next question here, where the learner is able to do a theory that explains the origin of the formation. You see, like when, when I click that, but then of course you've seen the video, these are theory rotation and you know you're moving with the learner uh with all that and i don't know uh, maybe it's still working on on this 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 is still work in progress but you can be able to see uh, the teacher begins with the video and then we go through and uh, there are all the things will be there as, as we demonstrated and you can see something there so we can be able to help you guys but we want you to create a lesson the best approach we have said is um have a template possibly we can share with you so that you can look at what or it's all about what you want to do and again your learners have a template in the learning objectives by the end of this lesson you will be able to remember the same lesson plans you've been having if it is not a template that uh, we, we even have templates for uh, i guess you know we also have templates for uh, uh, we can even help you with the lesson plan, the way the CBC lesson plan is done, so that it's more of learning objectives, learning outcomes rather than learning objectives. Then in terms of this, by the end of this substrand, you will be able to blah, 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 you know, appreciate, you know, even those, remember, uh, the cognitive, and then the appreciative, and the attitude uh, domains, and all that, you can even put all that. We will be able to show you, you that in probably the next lesson. I'm just, I'm just, I think, supporting some teachers uh, from here. I think we didn't have a, we really did, we really needed just to have this session today first, so that at least people know that uh, when you go online, you want to create a lesson for the learner, not just throwing content. It is very bad. And if it's the lesson, it should follow uh, the way you as a teacher have been doing it. Guys, don't let us not allow these businessmen and women outside there to get into our territory. This is our territory. We were trained to teach. Some of us were called uh, from heaven to become teachers. Let us support the learners. If we, leave, <laughs> if, we, if we leave businessmen to take over, definitely our learners are going to yes, be the role. That yes. is very true. Yeah, yeah. Let's do our, our thing. Thank you, Edward, for putting that. Yes, some of us are called teachers and we are doing it out of passion. We let the learners learn, not just throwing content 
exam because I see I'm, I'm in several WhatsApp groups and you see people say, give me a, a mock paper, give me that, throw for me that, so that what do you want to do with the papers? Now, this was just term one. Students have not learned so much. You are busy bumping on students' past papers. I mean, let us teach our learners. Create, create a lesson for them to follow. Pole pole, lesson flow. Let us let the lesson flow. The question should just appear inside the lesson. And that's where the, the internet and the, the online smart school that the government is going to bring is here, guys. And let us support it. And we will be there for, for it. And if you are a teacher, join up, start creating. You know, for you people, it will be so comfortable. Because you already, you will be creating lesson plans and you're able to get in uh, very straight. Uh, let us see probably even, look look at even the kind of, I think in our next lesson we'll be looking at the assessment. I think this is, this is the view of a teacher. Let me see. David, just one thing I want to emphasize. Yes. I just wanted to emphasize on the aspect that uh, uh, on the issue of exams, the crisis should also be even help us to understand that life is not about exams. Uh, as teachers, we needed to really rethink teaching so that we are worried about learning and rather than worried about will students be able to sit for exams. And I like Professor Magoa who says that uh, dead bodies cannot sit for exams. Yeah, so we should now be worried more about learning rather than worried about exams. We should be worried about the competences rather than worried about they'll be able to get the best grade. So that is the whole message that teachers should be able to spread around. And that's what the whole globe is talking about in terms of teachers facilitating learning, not you covering content. Let's go out and facilitate learning. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. Thank you, Edward, for that uh, particular contribution. Look at, in our next session, we'll be talking more about uh, assessment. And you, we have so many wonderful assessments that teachers can really work with. And I think now, how do you bring in assessment? That aspect of exams, how do you set an exam? How do learners do exam online? That is what we are going to do in our next features. And you can imagine we have amazing, amazing uh, tool. So far, I think in the classroom here, we've had like 30 from ones who have, who have managed to come in. Let us see what can be here in the test. Uh, what is uh, probably is there a test? Ah, uh, yeah. Like even look at this, a wonderful test. A teacher uh, want to give a test to the learners, and, and probably oh, this one maybe I'm not yet because I did not probably do it. Uh, this I think I've logged in as a student, but let me log in as another student and find out which other student we have in the system. Log in as, uh, we have a student here calling himself James Gitao. Uh, and James Gitao is also a Form 1. We are soon bringing Form 1s on board. We have already registered those who have shown interest. We are all going to link them with you teachers. What we needed, first of all, is to have all teachers being able to create maybe a lesson, a lesson, so that when the students get online, they find something, they find learning. It's not about throwing content like uh, maybe exam to them, but we want them to, to do that. Um, if you have a learner that you want us to, to enroll, kindly, don't worry, we are not charging. This is particularly free because we are doing to help. This is the only contribution we'll be able to do. We may, we may, so this student has also entered and when the student signs in, uh, they get to the green, uh, we will make it so that they just get their, dash, their dashboard straight away. But for now, I've just put it. So you see, only lessons which are ready for the student is what they will be able to see. The lessons which are ready, this is computer form one is ready. There is some work in geography form one. There is something for physics form one. There's something in the mathematics form one. There's something in biology form one, and there's English. So in biology, what is there? Is look at this teacher was trying to trying to create um, to create a small quiz here, maybe a test of uh, these students want to 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 try, and you can see 
It's about in this activity, you are required to drag and drop the label in the correct place on the diagram. Probably you have talked or you have, they have watched a video on how the heart works and they've seen the heart working. Now is the time for them now to try testing themselves. So you can see the student can just drag and put, I don't know whether that is the truth. I'll just, I'll just do randomly, guys. Uh, I don't know all this uh, right now. I think I've put in the wrong places and I know it's really wrong where they are, but we'll be able to reset all this and things will happen. Now look at that. And the students are just finished attempt and wait for the, for the results. And look, uh, then do you want to submit? Yes, submit all and finish. So once you have submitted, of course the attempt comes. But oh, you're finished. You done it within 15 seconds. How many points have you got? You've only got two out of 10. You've gotten 29%. The feedback is immediate. And this is how the student had done it. So probably the student can be given a chance to see uh, because your answer is, is, is uh, partially correct. You have correctly selected only two. You've done a great work and all that. So then you can always review and do many other things so that you see the right one if the teacher wanted you to see. So look at these amazing tools that teachers can do so that you don't give a student a whole paper, yet learning has not taken place. Let us focus more on the learning. Thank you so much. I think we've covered quite a lot today. Uh, I want to bring Michael again. <coughs> and in maths, what this student is going to see, remember maths is here. A teacher had already created something with some knowledge check. But again, we encourage, instead of just, this was just generally a label outside. But if it's a lesson, it's also good. We are saying your approach is valid. Remember, you are the teacher. You are the teacher. You are the facilitator. Let us help the learners learn. Let us see what uh, the English teachers have done. They have created some types of verbs, but we want it, make it, uh, I would encourage, we, we all pick maybe this kind of, uh, maybe this one from, uh, let us see, yeah, maybe this kind of uh, away approach that Michael is having, that you probably give them something like that, and then they, they see everything. And you see, there's this part. If this thing they cannot click, you see, I'm a student, I'm logged in as a student, and I cannot have this part checked. If this one will only check once I've finished, that's when it will click that I've finished the activity. So I'm being monitored. I am able to attend this class, guys. As a student, I cannot escape and I cannot move to the next activity without finishing this activity and this activity. But if I'm good enough, the questions that I'll get somewhere here will push me to the next one that I really, so that I move very quickly. And there's a way a teacher can evaluate that you are not doing good. Right. Yes, Margaret says, some of us were called from heaven to be teachers. Yes, true. And that's what, what us, some of us are doing here. So remember this thing, guys, nobody is going to leave it for us. We have to grab it. <laughs> we have to grab the teaching. The politician will take it over and start creating content. And you have seen them doing work online, teaching our students. Why? Because teachers are still just throwing things in. And you look at, when I go to some WhatsApp groups, what they are doing, they are sharing things to do with data bundles, politics, and all that, but you, 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 which is okay, but I want us to share something like this. How do I learn how to create a lesson? I want to create a lesson for my students who are not with me. They are remotely in a remote place. And the good thing with this platform, even mobile phone is there. And you can be surprised, this secondary school student, all the teenagers have flat smartphone because they're always on WhatsApp. It's only the primary school, school students whom we need to rethink how to reach them out. And I think radio and TV, the way the government is trying is okay. And probably other partners are doing everything they can. But otherwise, for the secondary school students, then they are not badly off. 
So, as I've said, we are going to take you to the next um, level. I'm happy that whenever we meet, every day we are learning something new. So, you say this model one, you over lesson, you just create your lesson where you present them in some content. And then that's as you usually do in your steps of lesson, step one, step two, maybe present them with another content and do knowledge check at the end of the lesson. Probably that's the end of the lesson. The way we do it, the way you do your lesson plans, it all depends on a teacher. And again, what you want to achieve as a teacher. Remember, the teacher in you will work. Those who are born to teach and train teachers and who are passionate about teaching will do it on their own way. And you can, you can, you should not limit your creativity to this. You can always change and make it the way you want. Maybe you want to design a lesson where the learners are met with some kind of content. And we say the content can be multimedia, can be a video, can be yourself recording yourself and putting, and we have given you uh, all these things. Or it's an audio. You want to talk about pronunciation. It's pronunciation, Christine. And you want to talk about sound. Sounds da or sound oh or sound sha and an s sound and you just make them and then give them even knowledge check. Tell them can you pronounce the sound like this? Can you pronounce the following sounds? Record yourself as you're pronouncing and submit. What do we miss with technology? And this one they can't do in a past paper, for sure. They can't learn those sounds in a past paper. The past paper will encourage guesswork for the, the elements they don't understand, they just have to guess and all that. So next time I think we'll be talking about more assessing learning in Moodle and we'll be helping you how do you assess learning, how do you create those questions and even creating engaging uh, lessons. Thank you so much for guys, guys for attending. I'm so happy and uh, get maybe uh, maybe any word from Michael or Edward or we've left for another meeting. Edward, are you there? Can you give us maybe your closing remark? Because I think today it's been good enough. We don't want to go so deeply. Okay, great. Maybe Michael, are you there still? Y yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, anything you can give us so that we, we can, I think maybe it's good to just do a little, not everything for today. Oh, yes. Uh, um, uh, actually, uh, maybe the only thing I can uh, add is that uh, this is an opportunity that uh, God has given us. And uh, as it has been said, the students can be home, but learning should not stop. And uh, since we already have access to the students, uh, the best way is we create these lessons, uh, we get them online. Once they are online, uh, then uh, we give the students access to them. And the good thing is, once you create a lesson once, you can always go back to modify it if you need to, but the lesson will be available to the students forever. Uh, so it's actually like a backup you have something even in your normal when we go back to our normal lives uh god willing then you can still keep on using the same lessons for the students so for me uh this is the way to go we should have done this a long time ago uh, not being forced by circumstances to do this because uh, the earlier we adopt it the better but the key thing Structuring the lesson is the first part. Uh, if you got that part correct, not adding the content comes later, but structuring it that I want this one to appear as getting the subheadings. Once you get the subheadings, because that is the structure, then you can easily add content and then the student can navigate between the content uh, uh, very easily. Thank you. can't hear you. We can't hear you. Uh, 
I'm, I'm just asking, Max was supposed to be, I'm seeing Max has got an inside and then again, Maxwell, then he, then he runs out. I don't know why he's running away. Maybe it's done. But today we didn't have a question. Uh, share back the link. Uh, let me just get to go through the question so that we finalize this particular part. Um, Sarah, <coughs> uh, to use the link, no problem. Sarah, we, instead of using the link, we'll give you those who are now who are now strongly getting in. We want just to create for you an account in Teams so that you stop struggling. Then we'll give you new sign up uh, with with licenses. I think we get we have some thirty licenses that we want to give to thirty teachers who can be able to create lessons. Uh, I think maybe that one will be very good for all of us because if pe people like Christine already have licenses and they are doing amazing here. Uh, Maxwell says got in but late, connectivity issues, no problem. Some of us were called from heaven, yes. Is it possible to do it practically? Yes, kindly do it practically and let us share. Uh, I had challenges last week. I missed all classes today. I was also late for 20 minutes. Don't worry, my dear. We will always give you the recording. The recordings are always available for you to be able to see. Um, I don't know whether there's any other question that I can be able to deal with. Okay. I think today we didn't have questions. Uh, thank you so much, guys. We love all this. Uh, kindly remember, we are also going to record this and share with you as soon as possible. Maybe by the end of the day, you'll be having it on your desk. Thank you so much. Um, may God bless you guys. And I want to say thank you. Bye bye. I'll leave this for maybe like five minutes because we have seen almost uh, 56 people are still online. And uh, if possible, I don't want to stop it. And yes, we are going to put this on YouTube just straight away. After this, we'll be, you give us like one hour to be able to download it and then send it on YouTube. We will be sending it on YouTube. Sarah will be waiting for license. Uh, Sarah, you already have an access to the whatever. The best is let us know where you are troubled, then we can we can give you. And of course, we will be supporting you. As long as you are ready to work, we, will, we are here to support. We let us support our learners everywhere, uh, everywhere, guys. And I'm always available uh, in case you need to reach me kindly. You can reach me at whatever. Uh, situation. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, once again, uh, let me once again let me hope uh, that we have done. Sarah says, uh, "Enjoy the lesson." Okay. Now let me just can always. This was for yesterday. I think I was not able to get in that, so let us create another one. And uh, remember, as I've said, you can always reach me uh, or reach us. Uh, you can reach me at muya at iamkenya.org, or, or which is which is good enough. So right. So let me just put it a bit big. So you can always reach me here. So. Our YouTube channel, will, which we will be putting all this, will be there. You can do anything you like, but the most thing is we are not saying subscribe or do what. What we are saying is enjoy the learning because we are teachers. We are not here to look for money, uh, but we are here to support. But we know money will come. Uh, money will surely come from the learners we are teaching. Money will come from the partners who are listening, money will surely come. Uh, and you can reach me through that number.
Christine, thank you. And thank you once again, Christine. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>